Our second section this year is called 1.2 Polygon of Constraints. We're going to learn about the definition and then we're going to talk about the importance of vertices. In the first PowerPoint that I showed you this year, you learned about systems of inequalities. And so far you've only really seen how to graph when you're given two inequalities in a system. However, there can be more than two. There can be several different inequalities in a system. And sometimes when their shading intersects, they form a polygon. So such as like a triangle, a square, a pentagon, any type of polygon. But they bound into a polygonal figure. I also want to point out that sometimes you're given lines that are just constants. And we've seen this last year. But just to review, if you have something like y is greater than or equal to just 3, not 3x, but just 3, that just means that y is going to be above the line of 3. So here we see y is 3, there's a solid line, and then it's shaded on top because it's greater than. But you can also see something like x is less than 0. So instead of a horizontal line crossing through here, you're going to have a line that x is 0, just going straight up and down. Um, it, in this case, it should be dotted. Um, it is, but you can't really see. And because it's less than, it's on this side of the X of the line. And you will see a lot of examples of this, just constant functions. Here's a system of inequalities. I have Y is greater than or equal to 2. Y is less than or equal to 2X. And X plus 2Y is less than or equal to 12. You should know how to graph the following and see, first of all, where the shading intersects and if it does intersect, if it creates a polygon. I did it for you here and I have three lines. My constant here, just pointing this out, my constant line, y is greater than or equal to 2, so up here. And it turns out that this here is the solution set. And if I want to answer the question, is this a polygon, this is a triangle. So this triangle is the polygon of constraint, and we call it a bounded polygon because we can actually see that the triangle is closed. It's closed at this point up here, this point down here, and this point down here. So here, if I'm just going to draw it for you, I have a point over here, I have a point over here, and I have a point over here. What about this system? I have x is greater than or equal to 0, y is greater than or equal to 0, so I have two constant constraints. I have x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 12, and 2x plus y is greater than 8. And the question is, does it create a bounded polygon of constraints? So basically, will it look like the triangle that I just showed you in the previous slide? So here is the x is greater than 0 part, here is the y is greater than 0 part, and here is actually where the shading intersects. And I asked you, is this a bounded polygon of constraint? Now, it looks kind of like a polygon here, but it's not a closed polygon. We call this an unbounded polygon of constraints, whereas the triangle was a bounded polygon of constraint. Just a note, in most real life situations, because eventually we're going to apply these polygon of constraints into real life word problems, usually x and y can't be negative. Usually we're looking for situations where x and y are just positive, so they can't be less than zero. Because of this, you'll often have included in your systems of inequalities something like x is greater than or equal to 0, y is greater than or equal to 0, which gives you something that looks like this, which basically tells us that this, in this region, is where our constraint will be. And even though a lot of the times it's implied that it is a positive situation and it can't be a negative, the question will still ask you to, and the question itself might actually include, these two constraints. So these will be two very common constraints that you see throughout this chapter. Next, it's important to know why your polygons vertices are very important to you. You're going to need to know this for uh, your chapters later on, but let's talk about your polygons vertices right now. So I've drawn 
three systems, so three lines of inequalities. You can see them there here is green, blue, and the dotted black line. And I've pointed out the vertices A, B, and C. And as you can see here, it is a bounded polygon of constraint because I have a closed triangle. How do you find the point where two lines intersect? This is from back in Sec 4. We reviewed it this year. How do you find the point where two lines intersect? You use systems of equations. Okay, so I have lines that are intersecting to create these corners. So if I ask you to find the point, you should know, okay, I'm going to do a systems of equation for these lines, and I'm going to find where these points intersect. My second question, when are vertices actually a part of the bounded region? Like, are, are, all, the vert are all the vertices a part of the bounded region all the time? These vertices are only part of the bounded region when the lines are solid, when both lines together are solid. In this example that I gave you, does vertex A belong to the bounded region? How about B or C? Vertex A belongs to the bounded region because both of the lines that intersect to meet a are solid. Vertex B is not part of the bounded region because this black line here is dotted, which means it's actually not included into the, into the region of the polygon of constraint. So B is not a part of the bounded region. And because of that, you can guess that C is also not a part of the region because it's being intersected by the black dotted line, even though we have this solid green line. Because the black line is dotted, it is not included in the region. My question is, can you determine the point of vertex A up here? Algebraically, you can see it on the graph, but algebraically, can you figure out what the point is given that it is bounded by the line x is greater than or equal to 0, so this green line, and the blue line y is less than or equal to negative x plus 4. I want you to treat it as a system of equations. Do it on your own, and then check your answers on the next slide. Here again are the two lines that are meeting to make A. And I told you to treat it as a system of equations, not inequalities. So I'm going to change my inequality just into an equal sign. I have x is equal to 0 and y is equal to negative x plus 4. So if we take x is equal to 0 and substitute into the second equation because I know that x is equal to 0, I get y is equal to negative 0 plus 4, which is 0, plus 4, which gives me y is equal to 4, so I guessed or I figured out algebraically that my vertex A is 0, 4, and if you look here, that looks like it's the right coordinate. This is the end of section 1.2 on polygon of constraints, so next we're going to learn about target objectives and advantageous solutions, which are basically real-life applications for polygons of constraints.